Welcome to Season 2 of Maker Club by EE Focus in partnership with the Hackaday Prize, a world-renowned hardware design contest, and DigiKey Electronics, a leader of distribution of electronic components. As our long-term partner, DigiKey Electronics would like to work with electronic engineers around the world to create and change life with technology constantly. Let's discover the splendidness created by makers together. In this episode, we sit down with Kusuma Hendra, an IoT engineer and also a university lecturer in Indonesia, to discuss some of his creative work and his multiple identities. Hi, I'm Hendra. I'm a university staff at Universitas Raharja, and I'm also a lecturer at the same campus. I've been a maker since 2013 and almost nine years now. Most of my projects are IoT projects, robotics projects, and recently I've got into tiny machine learning project and also game developing project. Your major, computer science education, is more focused on software. What led you to the hardware field? Uh, actually, it's a funny story because after graduated, graduated high school, uh, I kind of get lost. I always want to be a game developer with a small interest in robotics, but I end up doing software uh, developing major, but I still doing some hardware stuff on my uh, spare time. So yeah, it's a small interest that I have in robotics that ends up for me to be a maker. What was your first work as a maker? Do you still remember your thinking and feeling when you created it? My first project is as a maker is a surveillance robot camera. So I'm using a robot chassis and on top of the robot chassis I use a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the first edition, the old one, the first edition of Raspberry Pi, a USB webcam, battery, and uh, some motor driver. Um, and programming, the Raspberry Pi is different from Arduino. I'm using a Python language. At that time, there are minimal, uh, minimal resources for the Raspberry Pi. And I'm kind of get uh, into this idealistic uh, path. Uh, I want this robot to be controlled via wireless network. My first maker project also won a national competition, which is Alumba Cipta Electronic National or National Electronic Creation Competition uh, at Surabaya. Uh, it's kind of fun. it's kind of overwhelming or overwhelming also because. I'm only six months, uh, six months of being a maker, uh, of learning programming, and I tried to submit my first project, and I got first place, which is kind of overwhelming for me. You seem to value fun a lot in your works, such as the IoT button that can connect to the internet, IFTTT, which tends to be more fun than functional. Is fun a major consideration in your creation? Yeah, not only fun, but I also want my, all of my projects are easy to replicate. And I also uh, want my project to be a, a base, a fundamental to everyone who is trying to be a maker at the first time. So yeah, fun is also a major consideration, but not only that, I also want easiness or easy to replicate as a major consideration to make the project. We noticed that you specialize in a wide range of technical fields, including game dev. As an IoT engineer, is this closely related and helpful to your daily work? My daily work has nothing to do with uh, making stuff or maker stuff, or even programming stuff. Even though I teach, uh, some, uh, sometimes, sometimes I teach about computer science, sometimes I teach about programming, also some basic electronic, but on my daily job, I don't really touch any of that. And also, I do make makers, uh, do some maker project, my making my maker project, back at home, uh, maybe at night when all of my children are asleep or, or my wife are asleep. Then I have spare time to do some programming or developing or develop my skill or try a new skill, like the most recent, the tiny machine learning, and also the game developing, and also. Last night, I was trying data science. Do you like playing games? Have you ever thought of making some things in a game in the form of hardware? Have you ever made a game or console by yourself? Yeah, I like playing video games ever since I was in elementary school. Fast forward until now, as a parent of two children, I'm still playing video games. Let's see, I have my Nintendo Switch in here. 
back in 2015 or 2016, I don't remember, there was this guy called, uh, called Kevin Bates. Uh, he had an, initi an initiative that an Arduino developer can make a game. He ends up making this thing, an Ardu boy. Uh, and the community of the Ardu boy also very, very uh, helpful have been very, very helpful on making your own Arduino Boy console. And in 2017, uh, I tried to make my own PCBs, and I'm quite being idealistic also at that time. I want to make my first PCB project as something useful and something fun also. So yeah, this is I end up with what I end up with. My own Arduino Boy console called Arduino. Can you share with us a project you're working on or you're proud of? Uh, is this a uh, project? This is a uh, package detection uh, monitor. So as you know, many people are shopping online these days, uh, ordering it via online shop and having it on a package uh, delivery service. But sometimes, most of the times, uh, some people are not at home. So uh, most of the package uh, missing or so that or we don't get any confirmation that the package is really arriving safely at our home. For this year, well, one of my most impressed projects is this guy. This is the Wildlife Sanctuary Monitor project that I've built for a contest also helped by Seed Studio. And the main objective of this project is to maintain or monitor the wildlife uh, sanctuary in Indonesia, also to prevent uh, wildfire, also to prevent wild hunting in the sanctuary area. As mentioned earlier, you specialize in a wide range of technical fields, including Arduino, MicroPython, PCB design, game dev, and LoRa. Do you learn these skills for work or just for fun? Well, as I mentioned before, my daily work or my job is not related to any of the particular stuff. So I learned this skill not only for fun, yeah. Fun also one of one aspect of my uh, on why I want to learn because I want to uh, I make this as a hobby. Yeah, fun is also one of my major aspects of uh, make uh, learning these new skills, but it's not really work related. Although I sometimes I wish I could work at some company that could benefit all of my skills on the on maker uh, stuff. Like this IOTs, Python, MicroPython, and Raspberry Pi, also. Yeah, maybe in the future I will try to make another decision for my future job. As a university lecturer, what learning philosophy do you want to convey or present to your students, and why? As a university lecturer, uh, the philosophy that I want really want to share to my students is to embrace uh, failure because most of uh, my students in the recent times with social media everywhere, you see a lot of people getting success on the, at a young age. Uh, they sometimes make them really afraid to try, afraid to fail. Yeah. So every time in my class, I always uh, told them, it's okay to fail. It's okay to get an error in your code. It's okay to get burned on your project. That's fine because that's how you learn. That's how you learn from your mistakes. We notice that you share your works on Hackaday. Are there many platforms and programs through which makers can share and communicate with each other in Indonesia? What do you think of the maker community in Indonesia? Is it active and is there a good ecosystem? And who are in the maker community? Are there more engineers or enthusiasts? Yeah, so the maker community in Indonesia uh, mostly uh, share their project or share their knowledge into social media like Facebook groups or maybe Twitter and Instagram. So we don't have any specific vessel or specific place uh, in Indonesia to contain all the makers or specific platform. We're trying to rebuild our own ecosystem and most of us are like me, uh, enthusiastic uh, makers that are doing maker stuff on their spare time and share to the world to get to know that this is our project and to inspire other people also.